Good. Four. You're about to deliver. Five. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sharon and if you're new here, welcome. So for today's video, I wanted to do a little get ready with me slash kind of give the story of my labor and delivery. So this is basically going to be like a little get ready with me slash chit chat and I'm just going to kind of explain how my labor and delivery went and kind of all the specific details of what happened and how it transpired. So if you are curious, keep on watching. So first I'm prepping my face with Glow Recipe. I just got this in the Allure subscription box and I've been wanting to try this product for a while and it's called the Glow Serum. To be honest, it's not very glowy, like it's not super glowy. It is hydrating though. So it's a good serum if you're looking for hydration. So let's talk about what my due date was. My original due date was March 24th, 2023, right? So I was kind of prepared for that date. I knew it could be earlier. I knew it could be later, but overall, you know, I was prepared for that date. But actually what happened was two weeks before my due date, I actually lost a portion of my mucus plug. And sorry, this whole video is going to be full of TMI stuff because this is all like you know, talking about female organs and stuff like that and like reproduction. And so this is gonna be like a whole crazy, <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit out there. So just be forewarned. This is like a warning that I might talk about some stuff that may be deemed a little bit like gross, but you know what? If you clicked on this video, you're probably curious about labor and delivery. Maybe you're pregnant and wanting a positive birth story, which I feel like I want watched one positive birth story on YouTube before I gave birth and that really really helped set my mind at ease because I don't know I just was going down the TikTok rabbit hole of seeing like all of the videos talking about you know all the things that can go wrong and you know like don't do this and then do this and you know make sure that they you know don't push you to get this and I was just like overall really worried about the whole process but watching kind of like positive birth stories especially positive stories about induction and being induced into labor those are really helpful I feel like because otherwise I feel like you're just gonna kind of go into it really negatively and almost like manifest you know a stressful situation with your birth experience so with that being said I remember when I was pregnant I was very stressed out I was watching a lot of TikTok videos and then somehow the TikTok algorithm basically put me into this like negative spiral, right? It put me into this negative spiral of, oh, you know, if you get induced, they're going to put you on Pitocin and it's going to stress the baby out and the baby's not going to like it and if uh, whatever you do, don't let them put you on Pitocin and don't let them induce you and you know, the body knows what to do naturally and you know, try to stay out of the hospital, try to do a home birth. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm not trying to give birth inside my own house. Like that sounds really messy. No shade to anyone who wants to do a home birth, but you know, like I want a whole team of like professionals and medical doctors, right? Like I'm not trying to give birth like by myself in my home home you know just in case anything goes wrong which fun fact my brother when he was born he was born completely blue because he had a birth defect where his heart was all messed up and they didn't know it until he was born so if my mom had done a home birth I don't think my brother would have survived because like every second is super critical when you're giving birth and you know something goes wrong like the baby's heart isn't beating or they're not getting enough oxygen so I personally was very pro hospital birth right but i just had all this anxiety kind of going into it so watching a positive birth story was really like powerful and calming for me so hopefully this is another you know positive birth story that you can watch and gain something valuable from it if anything but this is just my experience that i wanted to talk about so originally my due date was march 24th but my water broke actually not my water but like 
like my mucus plug came out early. It came two weeks early. So I remember waking up in the middle of the night to go use the restroom for the hundredth time as you know pregnant women do. And then this time was a little bit different because I felt something come out when I was peeing and I looked in the toilet and it looked like a huge booger. Like it looked like a green, like green snot or something. And I was like, oh my God, is this like the mucus plug that everyone was talking about? This was my first birth. So I don't know anything about anything. And I was looking at it and I thought, okay, so this is probably the mucus plug or at least part of it came out. So I took a picture of it and then I went back to sleep because this was like around 3 a.m. And then I woke up again at 6 a.m. And literally when I stood up, I felt something like gush out of me and trickle down my legs. And I was like, and literally my husband was sleeping and I was like, I think my water might have just broke. And he was like, oh, okay. And like both of us didn't really know what to do because it's both of our first child. So I was freaked out, but luckily I had a OBGYN appointment that morning. So I don't know, it all worked out perfectly that I had a checkup that morning with my OBGYN. So I went, I got dressed, I went to the doctor and she was testing the fluid that was coming out and she was like, yep, that's amniotic fluid. Your water has ruptured early. And so she was like, you need to pack your bags, you need to eat a good meal and you need to go to the hospital, you're having a baby. I was like, what the, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm so crazy. Good morning, so it's 7.20 a.m. right now. We're gonna head to the hospital after getting breakfast. My water broke at 37 weeks, so I am most likely getting induced. I'm only one centimeter dilated. And yeah, so I'm gonna have to get induced at the hospital. So I'm feeling okay. I feel a little bit of like pressure down there, but I haven't had contractions or anything. But yeah, I'm just excited. So yeah, so I just casually, you know, pack my bags. You know, in the movies where it's like your water broke and everyone's like freaking out and you're like trying to get all like your stuff and your like husband's like drive, like rushing through traffic to drive you to the hospital. It was so not like that because she was like, yeah, your water broke, but not a lot. It's just kind of broke a little bit. And she was like, but you're probably gonna need to be induced because your cervix is not that dilated. It's pretty much closed. So my water broke without my cervix being dilated. And just so you know, those two things are different. I always thought that when your water breaks, that means that your cervix is dilated and then you're ready to push the baby out. That's not true. Cervix dilation and pushing the baby out, two different things. Yes, the baby had to come out because once your water breaks, it's no longer a sterile environment. So you have to give you have to get the baby out within like 24 to 48 hours at the max. So with that being said, I packed my bags, I got everything ready. You know, we were so chill about it. Like me and my husband, we were just like, we went and got breakfast. We went, <laughs> we were so chill. We were just like, he got me flowers. We were just kind of like reminiscing about everything and taking our sweet time. We got to the hospital. Hey, we're here at the hospital. They just wheeled me up to labor and delivery and they asked me to do a urine sample. So I'm just gonna get all checked in. It all happened very fast. So I have Kaiser insurance. This was all within the Kaiser Hospital in Los Angeles and amazing experience with Kaiser. Their labor and delivery team was amazing. So yeah, when you first get into Kaiser, they kind of have like a, three different rooms, right? The first room they had me in was the check-in room. So they check you in, they monitor your vitals, they kind of do an assessment. And then the second room is your suite. So this is your labor and delivery suite. This is a huge room all to yourself. There's a TV, there's, you know, the baby stays with you in the room. And then the third room is kind of like where you are discharged. So that's like the last room you stay in before you are discharged from the hospital. Overall, I was 100% satisfied with them, their service, their nurses. They were so nice and they were constantly checking up on me, like a little bit too much. That's how like, you know, caring and persistent they were. They were like always on it with like checking my blood pressure, seeing if I was hungry hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you need anything? Like they were on it. So I'm really grateful for the team at Kaiser for my 
amazing birth experience even though I did have to get induced they made it amazing and even the lady who did my epidural she was so nice and she was quick like she was like doing her thing and like yeah it did hurt getting the epidural but by that point you're feeling the contractions from the pitocin and those contractions hurt a lot so when I saw the anesthesiologist I was like so happy for her to jam that needle into my spine like please please give me the epidural right now I don't care Cut the cord. So I'll insert some clips of my experience at Kaiser so you guys can kind of see and hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully it was informative if you have any other questions about either getting induced or Kaiser, what that experience was like, anything like that. Just leave it down in the comments below. You can also DM me on Instagram. But overall, I feel like it's important to kind of share these positive birth experiences with each other because a lot of the time you just hear like the worst case scenario and that's definitely not the case you know there are sometimes bad experiences but there's also good experiences so don't get too overwhelmed so don't be too worried and just i wish you a very good birthing experience and hopefully you have you know an amazing experience so thank you guys for watching bye guys